I trusted you well. I'm Ethan Tashebi, and of course, my guest Anka will be joining us later on. Nel Ngabo, you're watching our TV news live from Kigadi. President Paul Kagame has pointed out uh, that the level of cooperation in Africa since the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic has been encouraging beyond the crisis. Kagame said that the continent will need to continue working together to see tangible results. The head of state was speaking at the 2021 Kusif Ideas Festival, a brainchild of the Nation Media Group. Addressing participants, His Excellency the President of the Republic of Rwanda reiterated that there are certain things African countries must do if they are to eventually achieve long-term development and use the zone as an example. In Rwanda, we have learned that transformation is a continuous process that requires thinking ahead to build a more resilient future. Going forward, as we continue building the Africa we want, let us apply the same mindset. The Kusi Ideas Festival is about innovation. For one, technology constantly creates new and better ways to share ideas. In essence, that's what the African Continental Free Trade Area aims to facilitate. We need to see significant investment in the digital capabilities of our people, especially young people. The challenges the continent has continued to face cannot be a reason to let up on such initiatives, rather the opposite. Even with the dual threat of COVID-19 and food insecurity, as we are currently witnessing, this practice would improve productivity while keeping our environment safe. Lastly, innovations should be introduced in the delivery of social protection to adapt to shocks with the support of the private sector. The first Kusi Ideas Festival was held back in 2019 here in Kigali as the nation media group that organizes it marked its 60th anniversary and this time around it is being held in Accra, Ghana with different dignitaries participating that include His Excellency Nana Akufo Addo, the President of the Republic of Ghana. Thank you, Serge, for that report. Now, still on the matters presidential, President Paul Kagame has noted that the University of Cape Town should play an active role in Africa's economic integration efforts, as well as African unity in general. The Rwandan president made the remarks during a ceremony to install Dr. Precious Moloi Motepe as the chancellor of the University of Cape Town. The University of Cape Town is not only one of Africa's finest universities, it is recognized around the world for excellence. Among its graduates, we count South Africa's best and brightest, as well as many emerging professionals in my own country and throughout Africa. The time our students spend on the University of Cape Town campus not only enriched them academically, but prepared them for a productive life of service after graduation. The chancellor is much more than a symbolic head of the university. Over time, the incumbent chancellor of the University of Cape Town has tended to reflect where South Africa is and where it is going. Precious is not only an eminent successor to our sister Grassa Machel, but an inspiration in her own right as a physician, a philanthropist, and an entrepreneur. My family and I are proud to count her and Patrice as friends and indeed family members. Going forward, 
we want to see an even greater connection between the University of Cape Town and our continent as a whole as we work to deepen African economic integration and unity. Now, Dr. Precious Moroi Motsepe is a businesswoman in South Africa, and last year, uh, Forbes magazine named her among the, th the, most, the 50 most powerful women on the continent. She becomes the University of Rwanda's Cape Town sixth chancellor, replacing Grasha Graka Marshall. All right, now still on more presidential matters. This very afternoon, President Paul Kagame appointed Alfred Gasana as the new Minister of Interior, according to the statement from the Office of the Prime Minister. Alfred Gasana has experience in security intelligence analysis and community engagement. He was born on the 24th August 1968 in Rujendabadi in Mohanga district. The 53-year-old man is married and has two children. He holds a bachelor's degree in law. Alfred Gasana was a burgmaster of former Nyakabanda commune from 1997 to 2001. When from 2001 to 2003, he served as the deputy director of economic affairs in the former Kayumba district, rather Kiumba district. Between 2003 to 2011, he was a member of parliament before he joined the National Intelligence and Security Services. Upon his appointment, the new Minister of Interior spoke to our colleague Jean-Pierre Kagabo about, among other things, expressing his acceptance for the responsibility given to him by President Kagame. I have gladly accepted this responsibility that the President sees me fit to lead the Ministry of Interior. I also believe it is part of what I have been doing and I believe that if we continue to work together, as Rwandans in general, I will fulfill all the responsibilities. Upon starting my duties, I will have discussions with others in this sector and that way I will ascertain for sure where to start from and working with others from the Ministry to achieve all its goals. Security really doesn't differ from the pillars of government. It's good governance, the economy, justice. If residents have access to all these, then they play their role in maintaining security in the country. So the focus is to see whether all these plans the government has for its people are accessible to the residents the way they should be. Then security is achieved that way. Whatever you do for the people, if they are not involved, it becomes impossible. <laughs> The civil society platform agreed that a lot has been achieved in promoting human rights amid this COVID-19 pandemic, although more needs to be done. This was mentioned as Rwanda joined the rest of the world to mark 73rd anniversary of the Universal Declaration of the Human Rights. Betty Motoni reports. Rights to work is access to health services, as well as the right to education are some of the areas that were affected by the measures put in place while fighting the spread of COVID-19, as the chairman of Civil Society Platform explains. We need to appreciate that the government has done a lot uh, for the last 27 years. It has built uh, institutions, as we all know, they inherited the failed, uh, failed state. But in the last 27 years, they've done a great job building institutions, training uh, um, human resources. But there's a lot that needs to be done, uh, educating the society so that they can understand their rights, but also making sure that the duty bearers respect people's, uh, people's rights. So, uh, for example, as you all know, COVID affected institutions. You saw the challenges between uh, so the citizens and uh, the, 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 the police uh, and also you see of recent when someone is caught drunk uh, the, his, his, the, the, they are punished severely but that has to be done uh, within, within the laws and within the respect of, of, of human rights so those are where, that, where there's a need for improvement so that we can uh, live uh, uh, a life that respects the rights of each and every citizen. 
the COVID-19 pandemic also had an impact on economic and education sectors, which affected the rights of people to access work and quality education. Officials at the National Commission for Human Rights appreciate the effort of the government. They believe certain measures should continue to be implemented in order to mitigate the effects of the pandemic. We appreciate this fund and women's participation in it, but there is a need for them to participate more, which will help them to continue making progress. We appreciate the measures put in place like 12-year basic education system, most especially the school feeding program, because it helps them to focus on their studies, and we recommend that the government increase its sensitization efforts so that the parents understand that their contribution can help their children to study well. The National Commission for Human Rights also commended the way government provided food supplies during the total lockdown implemented at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, meant to assist people who survive on daily wages that were unable to work. The UN resident coordinator in Rwanda appreciates the measures the government adopted to ensure the worth of citizens. Really portrayed it as a good example. They have even achieved now the target set up for December 2021 for vaccination. Of course, we need to continue Sindahoka, Kumera, Kumoheto, this aspect. We also thank the government for the economic and recovery plan and economic recovery fund. Discussing the progress made in the development of human rights in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic coincided with the celebration of the 7th anniversary of the publication of Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Betty Mutoni, reporting for our TV News. Thank you, Betty, for that report. Now, let's go back to the installation of Dr. Precious Molai Motepe as the, cha uh, the Chancellor of the University of Cape Town. And joining me right now via Skype is Professor Mamokenti Pakeng, who is the Vice Chancellor of the University of Cape Town, joining us all the way from South Africa. We appreciate your time. Many thanks for joining us this evening on Rwanda TV. Thank you very much for inviting me. Pleasure. Um, it must have been an eventful day today, but let's first talk about having President Paul Kagame speak at the installation of Dr. Precious Motepia as the new Chancellor of the University. What does that mean? Well, it was, it was a wonderful gesture. Of course, we at the University of Cape Town have had good relationships with uh, Rwanda, uh, with many of um, the postgraduate students, um, we were trained in Rwanda. There's many academics who were trained, uh, who were trained at UCT. Um, and we also have a partnership with the University of Rwanda in the, um, uh, we are together part of the um, uh, Alliance of Research Universities in Africa, African Alliance of Research Universities. And, um, and, and that was very symbolic. It was so apt because in our vision 2030, um, we are reclaiming our African identity as a university, and we want to be the best for Africa. And having President Kagame talk at the inauguration, um, who is one of the, the, the very respected leaders in the continent and the world, it was, it was really heartwarming. It, made, it sort of was symbolic in terms of what we want to achieve or to be to the continent as a university. So we were very grateful that uh, President Kakame uh, managed to speak at, our, at, at the inauguration of, of our chancellor. You, you seem to actually be having a very good relationship uh, with Rwanda. We uh, understand a couple of uh, Rwandan students have gone to your university, isn't it? Yes, they did. And, 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 and I mean, the truth of the matter is that we would like to have that relationship continuing. I mean, we, we know that there are difficulties in terms of Rwandan students coming to study at UCT. Um, not coming to study at UCT, but actually getting visas to come and study in South Africa. And our hope is that that complexity gets resolved mm -hmm. because we, we, our relationship with the University of Rwanda is a very strong one but also with the uh, African Institute of Mathematical Sciences that now has got a branch in Rwanda. And as you know, it started here in South Africa, in Cape Town, and many of our academics are engaged in it. So, so we, 
yeah, we have a very strong relationship. And, and of course, um, the Deputy Vice Chancellor for Research at the mm. University of Rwanda is also a good collaborator with us. Uh, and of course, the former Vice Chancellor as well, and the current Vice Chancellor. I met, I met the acting Vice Chancellor actually. Um, I'm not sure if there's already the, uh, um, the permanent Vice Chancellor appointed, but um, we work with uh, Professor Cotton. Um, and we work with the Deputy Vice Chancellor for Research, and I've met, I can't remember his name, but the uh, acting Vice Chancellor. So we have a very strong relationship. Uh, University of Rwanda is an important partner. Rwanda as a country mm. is, uh, is important for us. Every time I go to Rwanda, I meet with the graduates. There's lots of them at, in Rwanda. We, we love connecting. They, they enjoy their time at UCT, and they, they continue to interact with us when we're there. So, so yeah, it, it, it really was um, uh, very heartwarming and, as I said, very symbolic um, yeah. for us to have uh, President Kagame uh, speak at, uh, at the inauguration. Very lastly, uh, what does Dr. Precious Motepe bring on board uh, to the University of Cape Town? You know, Dr. Mule Motepe brings stature, brings a wealth of experience, um, not only in philanthropy, but in business and also in working with, with universities elsewhere in the world and also global organizations such as uh, the World Economic Forum. And so she brings to us a network, but also wisdom, wisdom that, that's rooted in how in Ubuntu, because um, uh, Dr. Muloy Mozipe works with the grassroots. She works with young people, she works with women, um, she works with traditional leaders and religious leaders in our country. And, and, and therefore she's connected to the people on the ground. And also what she cares for, her value system resonates with ours. She is um, very committed to um, environmental sustainability and also attending to the plight of the poor. And, and that resonates with us. So we are very fortunate to have someone of, he, of her caliber having accepted to be our leader at this very critical time, not only of the world, but also of yeah. higher education in South Africa and on the continent. Professor Pakeng, we are really appreciate your time and thank you so much for giving us insights about this whole installation activity but also the Rwanda uh, Cape Town University relationship and South African relationship in general. We really appreciate your time indeed. Thank you very much. That is Professor Pakeng, who is the Vice Chancellor of the University of Cape Town, telling us more about uh, the installation of Dr. Precious Malayo Motsepi and what we expect as Rwanda, especially Rwanda South Africa relations. Now, students at the University of Global Health Equity in Burera District are happy that Butaro Hospital is to be expanded to become a teaching hospital that will help them with the practical part of their studies, enabling them to achieve quality education. The project is expected to cost more than 14 billion Rwandan francs. Gloria Mutesi reports. The expansion of Butaro Hospital to a university teaching hospital comes as a solution to the challenges in the medical sector and services given to the public and the students of the University of Global Health Equity, according to Dr. Kaitare Emmanuel. The first priority is to give residents great service. There are some services they are already getting from here, while for some other tests it required them to go elsewhere, perhaps to Kigali. But after expansion, they will be able to get all the services here. And for the students, it will be a placement hospital for them to learn from, just like any other university teaching hospital. Officials from the northern province, along with the management of Butaro Hospital and the University of Global Health Equity and its partners, laid the foundation stone for the expansion of the hospital. Residents are happy that once the hospital is expanded, it will be able to provide them with timely services, whereas medical students at the University of Global Health Equity are looking forward to the advantages that will come with this teaching hospital. Now that we are going to get a university teaching hospital, we will be able to see how diseases are treated firsthand 
because we shall be involved directly and with the support of all the professors and the experts that will enable us learn we are really happy and grateful to the government of Rwanda and all stakeholders and partners the governor of the northern province is urging everyone to take advantage of the hospital's expansion for the students who will be learning from this hospital, I would encourage them to own the responsibility of taking care of this hospital as their own that will facilitate them to be better doctors and properly maintain the infrastructure in the hospital because it will be properly equipped. The project to expand Butaro Hospital to become a university teaching hospital will be done in four years' time and upon completion, it will house modern facilities equipped with modern equipment, including surgical instruments and 100 beds on top of the existing 140 beds. Welcome back. I'm Nel Gabo, and I'm your guest anchor for tonight. In other stories making headlines globally, the latest fighting in northern Cameroon over access to water supplies has killed at least 22 people. Thousands of others have fled to neighboring Chad because of unrest between fishing and hunting communities. Bébé, tu es zoli, mon cœur tu l'as cramé, à ma gambo y'a la camie. Bien à la première, bébé, tu es zoli. Zoli, yeah. I'm tempted to ask, yeah. what Zoli that is not French? Uh, with my little French, that is, doesn't sound like French. It's, uh, it's French, but we, we just turned around the word joli. Jolie, yeah, yeah. oh, fantastic, man. Yeah, yeah. Del, good to have you, man. Thank you, appreciate it. Have you been? I'm good, I'm Doing good. well? Yeah. You actually did well. Yeah. You're ready for uh, news anchoring. Have you done journalism school classes before or anything? No, no. <laughs> you did great, man. Um, yeah, appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, Anel Gabo, real name? Gwang Gabo Bjusa Nelson. Oh, so Nel is from Nelson. Yeah. Uh, and Gabo, Gabo is from, from Gwang Gabo. Yeah. Bjusa Nelson. Yeah. Man, how long have you been in this industry? It's two and a half years. Two and a half years. Yes. And you've become such a star, man. I appreciate it. No, you're I'm giving grateful. us hits after hits. Yeah. Who writes your songs? Me and Clema. You and Clema. Yeah, we exchange ideas in the studios. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Work but like do you that. know, actually, I think you're one of the artists who release. You, first of all, you have your way of timing, uh, yeah. you know, spaces in between, yeah. and you give us hits and we dance. Um, uh, this, I think it was yesterday, I was traveling with a, a friends uh, from, colleagues actually from here, yeah. and we were, you know, we were having fun with that new way and everything, and yeah. it was, was such a, a beautiful song. Um, appreciate, appreciate. So how long have you been, uh, you and Clema, you seem to be actually having a very special relationship. You're probably one of the guys who have stayed longer in Kenya music. I don't think I'm. Uh, I stayed longer, yeah. but because uh, there there are other artists who are who have been there for a long yeah. time, yeah. like Platini, like uh, Tom Close. But uh, I'm looking forward to to stay there for a long time too. Fantastic. Let's first uh, sing. This, uh, give us this a few lines of this song, yeah. and I want to ask how you came up with this whole idea, yeah, the yeah. Lingala idea. I love it. I yeah. love the idea. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. So this song, yeah. um, please bring it down. Um, this song is actually such a nice song. I appreciate it, I appreciate it. First of all, we don't see Mutuare in the title or whatever. It is Mutuare. Is that yeah. a street language that you're actually yeah. bringing into? Yeah. Who came up uh, with this whole idea now? It's, it's Clem actually. 
Really? He, yeah, he, he... Such a genius. Yeah, of course. He is. As well, yeah. So, um, I, I think I've seen a couple of songs, you singing in a bit of Lingala, a bit of French, and yeah, a bit yeah. of... Um, do you relate with the Lingala world? Yeah, uh, my father grew up in Congo. Yeah. So, we tend to speak a lot of uh, French at home. Fantastic. Yeah, that, that, that's why in my songs, some songs I put some French in it. Now, it's been a pleasure having you here, man. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate for having me. Man, anytime, this is home. Whenever you feel like when 21st comes, yeah. please let us know. We need to thank hit the uh, ground so running. Much. We need to promote your album. I appreciate but we also need to support each other in thank this you, industry. Thank you. It's a wrap, guys, from me and my guest, Anka Nel Ngabo, and of course, from the entire news production team. Many thanks for your time. I'm Ethan Tashabia. Bye for now.